Well, if you look at how our system compares to some of the other states, um, you begin to see maybe where, where we're having some difficulties that maybe the other states aren't. And so I want to just spend a little time on that, uh, probably five minutes. Uh, the guy who was a, a director of the National Association of State Directors of DD Services wrote a report in which he looked at the four states that are currently doing uh, managed care for people with disabilities. And uh, <clears throat> what he found was in Arizona, Michigan, and Vermont, the managed care plans were being put into effect statewide for all publicly funded long-term care services. Now, the others, so the other states did not approach it like we have in an incremental way that we were expanding over a number of years. And just that incremental way we're doing things has caused some problems in and of itself. I had one of my colleagues tell Kitty Rhodes, the Deputy Secretary, that you know uh, the expansion of family care is kind of like uh, trying to uh, fly a 747 at the same time you're trying to build it. And you might recognize that might cause some problems. Um, the other thing is that some of the other states uh, took all of the populations in uh, across the age spectrum. We've limited it to adults. Um, none of the other states has used commercial uh, health maintenance organizations today, like the United Healthcare, Ameri-Groups, uh, WellPoints, and those kinds of uh, organizations. Although that's starting to happen now, and that might be one of the fears that we should think about is that if our managed care organizations don't do well, that might be the alternative, and we're not sure we want to go there. We'd rather probably improve the system we have than to have uh, these other organizations which are not even accountable at all uh, because they're multi-state uh, corporations. Um, the other thing is that uh, in Arizona and Vermont, it's actually an agency of state government that functions as the managed care organization. So, you know, when we talk about risk and maybe, you know, the problems that we're seeing with uh, some of the organizations having problems with financial solvency, you don't see that there because the state itself is assuming the risk. In Michigan and Wisconsin, long-term care services are actually purchased through risk-based contracts with the network of MCOs. Um, in Michigan, that, that system allows for over and above their, their per member per month uh, rates that they get, which I think are a little more stable than ours. Um, they, they have a, a leeway of 7.5%, so they can go 7.5% over and the state will take care of that for them. That's, that's the risk sharing that they have with the state of Michigan. We don't have that. Uh, there is some um, support that's being given to those financially struggling organizations, but as I understand it, it comes at the expense of the other MCO. So they just basically shift money around, they don't put new money into the system. And uh, they don't really, doesn't look to me like they've really taken a really close look at why those differences exist around the state. Um, so in Arizona and Vermont, 100%, Michigan, 7.5%. Um, there's a variety of uh, administrative arrangements that exist. In some states, this, the DD agency still has a pretty significant role. Uh, here in Wisconsin, the Bureau of Developmental Disabilities was actually dissolved. I think that's a problem because then there's not that level of expertise and focus at the state government level. And uh, in, in its place, there was something uh, created called the Office of Family Care Expansion. Mm -hmm.